Welcome everyone. Today we are going to be talking about student loan debt. I have Bill Schimmel with me from MetroLink Mortgage. Say hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. Hey, guys. <laughs> Thanks for inviting me, Stephanie. Of course. So, um, I mean, let's jump right into it. I know there has been a lot of people that I know that their student loan debt payments just kind of restarted and they're essentially freaking out because it's almost as much of a mortgage payment for some people. It is. So um, what advice do you have for those people that have a mortgage and have these big chunks or big payments? Good question. Um, well, first let's start off with you know where mortgage rates are. So okay. if somebody has a mortgage right now, mm -hmm. they are sitting at maybe three, three and a half percent. It may seem you almost <laughs> yeah, you would hope. You would hope you hope everybody took advantage of that when they had the opportunity. But um, I am seeing more and more of my past clients coming back. Uh, okay. that have the three and three and a half percent interest rate but because they have so much debt including student loan debt that it may make sense for them to refinance even if it is a higher rate because it's going to improve their cash flow over a period of time okay does that make sense yeah so we consolidate all those Everything. individual monthly payments into sense. one even though that interest rate may be somewhere in the high sixes it still make make financial sense to go ahead and do that if we can improve your cash flow because you're really going to have to take a look at it is it going right. to be the interest savings but you can't even put gas in your car mm -hmm. or if we can save you a few hundred dollars a month even though it's hard to swallow that interest rate it may make financial sense to do that so that's one option okay um if we stay away from the mortgage side what i have seen done i don't know the process of it but you could call your loan uh your, your student loan servicer mm -hmm. and find out if you qualify for uh, it's called an individual uh in, income development program idp i believe mm -hmm. is the acronym for it nice. but what you can do is you can actually talk to your student loan servicer and see if you qualify for that so instead of paying the actual payment that they have amortized for you right now they may work out a deal. So my daughter has this with her student loans. Oh, nice. That'd so cool. it's based on the amount of income that you make. And we can also do mortgages on those same types of payment programs where Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and FHA never used to let us do it. We can do that now. So oh, that's we can cool. get into that in a little bit. But there's some relief right there. And it's significant. So I will use my daughter as an example. She has a significant amount of student loan debt because, as you know, she's a pharmacist. Yeah. So yeah. she... she because she's not making as much as some of the senior pharmacists do, she was able to qualify for this income. Uh, it's IDP. IDP, I think is what okay, it's called. I think it's IDP. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, so the payment is significantly different. Oh, nice. Yeah. So um, did that basically, I don't know if you know, but re-amortize it and just kind of stretch kind of, it out so or just kind they, of give you like a flex payment? They kind of give you like a flex payment. Okay. So it's, it's you, I mean, you're certainly going to pay everything that's due. Right. But... You know, the, the, the amount of interest that you're paying on it and so on is going to be less. Now, I will say it'll probably stretch that thing out for you. So you may be paying on that student loan for 20 years, especially. Right. But hey, if you're in, a, you know, like a lot of us are hurting right now. So yeah. if, if it's something that you need to do, that would be a suggestion that I have too. Nice. And it's I'm assuming it's one of those things that once your income goes up, they probably adjust that payment. It's a great point. So that so 20 years might shrink a little. <laughs> annually, they will review this annually because gotcha. my daughter's had it done twice. Okay. So they will review it annually. Mm -hmm. um, and then once, uh, it, once you reach a certain income threshold, they probably will take that program away from you, but it's on a tiered then you system. Can afford it. <laughs> but hey, I mean, you know, God bless our teachers. What if what if we have some new teachers out there that yeah. have fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars of student loan debt? They they're unable to buy a house because they're making these payments. They certainly would qualify. Yeah. For something like oh my that. gosh. Yeah. Okay. So next question is, I like the idea of even talking to like juniors and seniors in high school. What should they be looking at as far as, hey, I want to buy a house as soon as I graduate from college or while I'm in college, but I also have to take out student loans to pay for college. What are your suggestions for that? That's... Route? And I have my own ideas. Yeah, well, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the college financing is is gotten out of control. Yeah, I agree. Um, so for the youngsters out there that really want to go to college but may not have the financial support, the family financial support to help pay for that so they don't have a choice but to do student loans. You know, listen, if, if some of these kids, as soon as you turn 16, you can start getting credit. Mm -hmm. So true. it would be my suggestion to juniors and seniors, 
Talk to your counselor. Talk to your bank. Yeah. Go get your very first credit card. You don't have to. It's not that scary. You can you can get a, a credit card with maybe only a hundred dollar limit on it, so you don't get yourself into trouble. And that's how you pay for your gas to get to your it's job, which is how you're gonna pay off your credit card. Spending. And and if you if you start now at sixteen or seventeen. And then let's say you have one for a year. You're a junior in high school right now. You're 16. You get your first credit card. Wait till your senior year, get another one. Now you have two trade lines before you graduate high school. That does a couple of things for you. Number one, you can qualify for your own financing for student loans. You don't need mom and dad. So if mom and dad aren't, don't have the ability or the credit worthiness to help you, mm -hmm. you can do that. Yeah. Um, the other thing is we're only one trade line short of you actually qualifying for home financing. Nice. So maybe you go out and get a, a car if, if you can afford one at a, at, a, at a reasonable payment. You know, I mean, if you could work while you're going to school. I mean, listen, you can, I only need 3% down yeah. to get you into a house. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're buying a $300,000 condo in, in the Denver metro area, which is it's not a unicorn, they're just not easy <laughs> to find. But, you know, you're only talking $9,000. Yeah. And we even have down payment assistant programs, so you could get almost as little as is a thousand dollars down so for those youngsters out there that are thinking about wanting to buy it's actually not a bad idea the trick is establishing your credit first yes that actually was one of our things when we first started to buy and we had no credit mm -hmm. we, because we they were like take out a credit card and we're like oh that sounds horrible but we did it and we built credit and we got it's, a mortgage it, it, it works uh it, it's very similar to rebuilding your credit if you've had an unfortunate mm -hmm. bankruptcy or something yeah. You literally get credit card applications in the mail as soon as your bankruptcy discharge mm -hmm. happens. Yeah. And people think that's absolutely nuts, but I have counseled folks who have literally gotten out of bankruptcy. They got two credit cards. Now, they're secured credit cards, right. but still, they're rebuilding their credit. And for folks that do have challenged credit in that area, if you've had a bankruptcy, we can get you financed 24 months after Wow, yeah, that is, months. oh my God, yeah. that's so, crazy. So, you know, it, it, there's certain parameters around it, but that's it another can episode. be, that's, another, that's a whole <laughs> other video, yes. Uh, but yeah, so back to the student loans, um, you know, if you're just out of deferment, you know, uh, if you're looking to purchase and the student loan debt is curtailing your ability mm -hmm. to finance a home, I, I would suggest calling your servicer and see what you can do to somehow, whether you get the IDP or you refinance it and take it out to a longer term, something along those lines. Nice. And then as far as new students, I like the idea of house hacking. So like Bill said, get those credit cards, mm -hmm. build up your credit, save enough for a down payment, and then you can even, if you can afford it, buy a house, rent out the rooms, the other students are paying your mortgage payment. It's just gonna go and there. And if you do it correctly, you might even collect a little bit at the end of the month and you have a free place to live. Let's go back to the three the $300,000 condo. Even if you got a two bedroom, yeah. two and a half bedroom condo, you have bedroom. one extra room. Mm -hmm. And rents right now, what do you think? Maybe 800, at thousand least, yeah. a month? Depending on your area, it's eight, seven, I mean, that eight could hundred a room. That yeah. could pay for half, almost half of your mortgage expense. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you're going to have to pay living expense somewhere unless you're fortunate enough to live with mom and dad. Right. For however long you can. I mean, my, both of my kids have moved back in and out a couple of times mm -hmm. when they were in their 20s. So, you know, uh, that that works too. That's actually the best way to do it if you're not paying right. any rent. Yeah. Uh, you know, so for those of you folks that are living at home, you really need to be rat holding money right now. You need pretend, to be, yeah, just pretend like you're paying exactly, rent and you're not, and exactly put it into a savings account. It's a hundred percent accurate because you'd be quite surprised at how quickly, if you're disciplined, on how quickly that mm -hmm. savings account will build up. And like I said, yeah. on a three hundred thousand dollar purchase, I only need nine thousand dollars down, maybe yeah. less. Yeah, nice. Um, and then just a quick spin on that is if you're in high school and you're thinking like I want to buy a house and I want to save money on my college and all of that you can actually earn a lot of places you can earn an associate's degree when you graduate from high school so if you're living with your parents and you have a job and you can earn that associate's that'll just save you even more money right there and it's going to make your adult life that oh, much it, easier it, it, i wish that was a thing when I was well and you know i i, I, I don't want to date myself but you and i both know <laughs> yeah. i mean college has changed dramatically oh yeah there's online, uh, complete online universities now. Mm -hmm. So you could literally work a full-time job during the day yep. and go to school in the evening. And if you're working, or I'm, I'm sorry, if you're living at home with your parents, 
like you said, you can crank out an associate's degree probably in 16 months yeah. if you didn't if you didn't stop. Yep. So you know, there's lots of ways to get there. The question is, are you willing to put in the work? Yes. It's Which includes getting of, the credit cards, all that stuff. It takes a little bit of work. Right. So are you yeah. willing to do what it takes? Exactly. And it's it's I guess it's all about what you want more. Now, you know, do yeah. you want do you want the student loan debt? Do you not want the student mm -hmm. loan debt? Do you want to buy a house right now? Do you not want to buy it's you know, there's all kinds of things, and there's all kind. Of, I, I don't know. There is an advantage to student loan debt. <laughs> well, there. I, you know, what I will say is, you know, for those youngsters out there that uh, are looking to become doctors, uh, there are doctor loans out there. So yeah. you may have three or four hundred thousand dollars worth of student loan debt, but I can get you financed with a doctor loan where they kind of set that off to the side. They don't count oh. it towards your. Debt, debt your, out, your outgoing debt or your debt to income as well. Oh my gosh. Yeah, now it's all just, I will, I will There's say this out. though, it's for <laughs> doctors only. I've tried so no dentists, doctor. they don't work. You know, uh, the only, it has to be a practicing doctor. Okay. And I believe they have to be in their residency in order for that to work. So they're already through the, the book That's part. That's amazing they're in their residency. though. Yeah. yeah. I will say I know some doctors and they had, they lived small and tight with their families while they were residents. And then as soon as they- It's, it's, it's you gotta play the long game if yes. you're a doctor. Yes, But uh, yeah, it pays off in the long run. But yeah, I mean, if, if, if there was any a profession to incur that much debt, I would say it would be some kind of practicing medical while. doctor. Right. Would be the route to go. Attorneys, we don't have that kind of, we don't kind of have that kind of loan. So, and attorneys get, you know, law schools are almost as expensive as yes. medical school, depending yeah. on your specialty. But uh, yeah, and, and you know, law students live the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, they get out. It takes them a few years before they really start to make the money. And well, again, that's where that IDP comes into play too. Yeah, in any degree, I would say if you are not sure what you want to do, you're thinking about getting into student loan debt, take a look at what you know you will be at when you first graduate. 100%. Five years after you graduate, because I have met, and I was one of these people, so many people that have, you know, so thousands in debt and they get out of college, they think they're gonna get that like six figure job right away and it's like, it no, it's it. it's great that you have the education but you also have to have the experience to you do. do the job, which takes some time depending on your field. And Most you know, fields. in fear of sounding yeah. like a parent here, <laughs> you really wanna do what you love too. So yes. I would caution youngsters that are thinking about, I'm not saying don't go to college, that's the farthest thing I'm <laughs> suggesting, but really take some time and think about what it is that you want to do. Yes, which because I, Because yeah. if you're going to have that, if you're going to stack that kind of debt over your head, mm -hmm. you at least want to know that when you're getting up every day and going in to do what it is that you do, that you do enjoy it, you love it. Yes. And you know, there's, I, I know I have clients, friends, I know lots of people that have degrees. I know people that have PhDs that absolutely despise what they do. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it's, I think it's really, really important mm -hmm. for our young, our youngsters out there to really think about that. And the mm -hmm. junior and senior year is the time to do it. Yes. And I will say, again, why I love the associate's degree at the high school is because you get those like boring core classes oh. out of the way. And then you can take a hot minute after you graduate. If you're not quite sure what you want to do. It's a brilliant I, plan. I will say don't go to college. But um, I went to college. I have a bachelor's degree. I don't use it. Right. You're in an industry that doesn't require one. Yeah. And, you know, I, and I do not have one. And yeah. I'm in the financial industry where the majority of the folks that are in our industry do have degrees. Yeah. Now, I know someone very specific who would beg to differ because he thinks that the things that college teach you as far as work ethic and just socially are super important, which I don't disagree there. Mm, yeah. There's, I, I, there's some, there, there's, look, there's a lot of benefits. There's some social benefit to going away to college too. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, I'm certainly not going to take any of that away, but if you're looking for social structure and you want to, you really want to tighten up your life, join the military. Yeah. It worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It works for a lot of people that I know that are former servicemen and women that, yeah. I mean, the oh, discipline yeah. that you come out with. And they're really extremely amazing. successful. It, yeah. The vast majority of the, the vets out there, the ones that, you know, don't have PTSD issues and things mm -hmm. like that, that are, have assimilated into into the into the population and into the workforce do very very well yeah i think there's a spot for everybody or trade schools are huge right now too i think I, trade schools i'm are shocked people still brilliant. haven't caught on because it's, you can be a welder and make a hundred grand a and year. talk about doing something you love like 
I've actually welded in the past, and it's. I think it's a very creative thing. Right. And yeah, it can be probably boring at some at times when it's very tedious, but mm -hmm. people make very good money. Yeah. Okay, so we covered people who are paying mortgages and their student loans. People who are thinking about taking out student loan debt. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. I mean, you know, we really wanted to focus on what to do with that student loan, especially folks that are looking to take on student loan. Let's make sure we give you the right advice. Yes. Before you pull the trigger. Um, yeah. You know, I, I would, if you do need to take on student loan debt, I would strongly suggest that you talk uh, with somebody to make sure you're on a good path so you can get that IDP when you get out. So if you're starting in a position where you're not going to be making as much money as you could 60 yes. months or 70 or 84 months down the road, something along those lines, you know, that's really going to make a difference for you. But, you know, it, it, it's, it's just about planning ahead. It yes. really is. And know your numbers. <laughs> know your numbers. And, you know, the younger you are, folks, if you start on this early, you will you will blow the doors off of your friends 10 years from that point. So it's, true. It's so true. Yeah. I mean, those you could be 21, 20. I, I, I've helped a 20-year-old kid. He, well, he was 19 when he signed the contract. He turned <laughs> 20 uh, before we closed. Nice. But he, uh, he good kid. He's a professional soccer player, so he okay. plays for the Rapids. Oh, nice. Uh, but he was so on top of it. And what this young man has done, he spent 12 months in that house. Now he rents it out completely. Yeah. yeah. So he's already building his real estate wealth. Yeah. Now he's 21, 22 now. So, right. yeah, I mean, you know, he was fortunate. He had a good job and a contract that helped him yeah. qualify okay. for that house. But, uh, yeah, it's it, it can be done. So uh, if, those, if you just take the time to do it, mm -hmm. go see your bank, your personal banker. If mom and dad won't take you, go see it yourself. And... and I mean, there's so many people out there to ask questions, and that will help. Absolutely. And just have our advice. Call one of us. Because we're older. <laughs> we're more <laughs> We've experienced. Been there. We're, yeah, more experienced. we're more experienced. Yeah. All right, Bill. Well, thank you so much. I hope oh, this my was pleasure. helpful to everyone, and we'll see you next time. Sounds great. Thanks, Stephanie. You're welcome. <laughs>